data is lying in silos, right? It's functional, it's lying in different departments per se. So uh, one doesn't look at marketing data in conjunction with the sales data, in conjunction with my uh, you know, uh, service data. So uh, my customer service may be saying about something about my customer, sales guys are saying something about my customer, marketing is saying something else about the customer because they are depending on different kind of data, different sources of data. So that's a challenge. That's, uh, it's, it's just not that data by itself and you're trying to use data becomes a, you know, uh, a key enabler for decision making. Now, uh, what do we need in terms of making analytics you know, uh, uh, that much more relevant uh, in decision making? Uh, primarily, you, know, uh, uh, you need to have standardized process. So when I said uh, information overload or data, uh, more of data takes that much of analysis to bring the decision making process into play, you need to create those standardized process so that the data, the, the recommendations or the analyst result is available almost on a real time basis. So in order to do that, you have to do a lot of homework or background work so that you know it is ready to be analyzed and it is ready to be delivered in a right platform to you um, when the time is, when you need that information. Uh, so creating those standardized processes, standardized analysis is very important to ensure that data actually helps you in making decisions. Uh, making, creating a pool of uh, people within an organization as analytics champion is very important because they are the ones, they are the champions or the pioneers who are actually talking about analytics, they are actually educating people, they are actually bringing different functions together in some way in, in the whole objective of ensuring that we have one uh, you know, approach or one vision uh, what data is telling and what should be done by the organization. <coughs> then skills expansion, uh, which is fairly uh, very similar to what happened probably mid 90s when uh, or, or late 90s when you know all organizations started embarking on this IT journey and they created you know IT team you know, within the organization so that piece is still missing in uh, Indian organizations and also in a lot of uh, Western organization where you need to create analytics professionals uh, whether it is data management whether it is visualization whether it is statistical whether it is big data technology you need to create a representative team, whether you want to do that all in-house or whether you want to do in a kind of a partner and in-house role. That depend, decides the team size, but you need to create those skill sets within the organization. Uh, um, uh, there has to be much more focus on metrics and measurement uh, when you are embarking on analytics because there will be a lot of you know, uh, skeptics within the organization. Uh, fortunately, unfortunately, when the IT boom happened, uh, nobody questioned the ROI. They just uh, said that, okay, this guy is doing, uh, ha is, has bought SAP system, so let me buy SAP system, right? Uh, uh, unfortunately, in today's world, uh, people are not ready to buy those story anymore, right? They have burned their fingers, so they want to know what do I get out of it? So there has to be a tangible metrics and measurement for a, all the analytics initiative that you're doing so that it actually gets uh, you know, organization buy-in over a period of time. And then obviously uh, best practice development is uh, very important because in our, while you are building the skill set, while you are measuring the metrics and measurement, but also there has to be you know, uh, a kind of inculcation of uh, what are the best practices that can be used uh, you know, within the organization going forward. So uh, now uh, this is, uh, this is uh, what we call a 360 uh, data aggregation, 360 uh, insights. This is uh, pretty much what Blue Ocean as a company does for all our clients. But necessarily what we are saying is uh, data is coming from different sources. Data is residing in different functions within our organization. Data is in different form, right? Uh, there is a data that is getting captured by the customer service team. There is a data that is being used by the marketing team in terms of ad spend, in terms of you know marketing spend, in terms of return on that ad spend, uh, tangibly or intangibly. And there's a sales data which is talking about okay, I launched this promotion, what returns I get, what response rate I got. And there's also you know employee uh, feedback. There's on top of that you have consumers talking on the social space, right? So this whole bunch of information that is there. 
Um, can I bring all of that together? It may not be feasible or practical initially to bring everything together, but one should have that you know goal or vision that at the end I need to have one story about my consumers. I need to have one story about my employees. I need to have one story about my trucks which deliver goods uh, to different places. So that's very critical in order to ensure that we are moving towards a more uh, you know holistic approach of using analytics. This chart is probably pretty uh, well known to most of you. This primarily talks about the entire maturity curve, all the components which comes as part of analytics, starting from data management to advanced analytics and prescriptive analytics. Uh, but necessarily what I'm trying to say here, it doesn't mean that you start with data management and move up the ladder. Uh, what I'm trying to say, you can actually, without having a proper data warehouse in place or without having a proper data mart and data system in place, you can still do that. Uh, but you should be aware that at some point of time you need to in invest in everything. Uh, so you can actually uh, have cases where uh, a bank, uh, a bank in a in a Southeast Asian company, uh, uh, Southeast Asian country, didn't have the data warehouse, but they wanted to do, uh, you know, predictive analytics and they wanted to launch campaign on their customers with targeted offers. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to do step by step, but you need to actually be, you can come in anywhere, but at some point of time, you need to do the backward integration. Um, overall, obviously, analytics has a lot of applications, and these are the six you know, uh, verticals which we work in. And, and as I mentioned, uh, clearly, uh, when you are trying to make analytics successful in an organization, it, sh it should start from what is the ROI that I'm expecting, what is the problem that I'm trying to solve. Uh, unless you solve uh, approach analytics from the top, you will be uh, you'll not be successful. If you are trying to just do something and then see its application and then go to the stakeholders and say this is something jazzy and fancy I've created, and you use it, it's not going to work. So anything that you do, uh, it has to be you know problem driven. It has to be initiative driven. And then obviously these are just a representative sample. It can be much more. And obviously there are similar you know, use cases for other industry like pharmacy or, you know, healthcare and education and all of that. Um, primarily, uh, you know, uh, what analytics is supposed to do is uh, gain competitive advantage. We talked about it. Uh, gain, get more better predictions, uh, make sense of ever-growing data, uh, better asset utilization and ROI, uh, and productivity gains. So. These are some of the advantages. Probably I'll move past to the next slide. So the second is data is lying across business units. And I talked about it. It's very fragmented. It's very segmented. Um, and that's not helping them in making the right decision when it comes to uh, making decisions with respect to customers. Uh, the cost is high. Obviously, uh, analytics doesn't come cheap. Uh, so that's a key concern for them. And then the uh, analytics tool cost and vendor cost are pretty much, you know, uh, they can be clubbed together. Uh, and then management support. As I said, it has to have champions within the organization at the senior management. Otherwise, you know, you're trying to just shoot in the dark. Uh, when it comes to non-users who are pretty much the, you know, the management team, uh, budget constraints. So it is, all, again, a, you know, ad hoc initiative for them, right? Uh, yeah. They are not sure what is the ROI that I'm going to get, what benefit I'll get. Uh, cost is high. So necessarily it talks about those four or five things because of which analytics is, you know, there is a reservation around this uh, big data analytics piece. Now, if you look at uh, the other side, I'll, I'll go back to the previous slide. The people who are using analytics, uh, why are they using it? First, better decision making. Right, people who have crossed the bridge and have started using analytics, they 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 use it for better decision making, and they are using for primarily to grow sales and revenues, and cost control and ROI. So these are the top three, like the things which are, you know, uh, people who have not crossed the bridge, they, for them, ROI is an important thing. But people when they cross the bridge, they find that it helps them in making decisions, right decisions, and it helps them grow their sales and revenue. I'll go back to my previous slide. Um, cultural change that is needed uh, for imbibing analytics ecosystem, right? Raising awareness, uh, creating talent, standardizing tools and processes which makes analytics real time for you. 
so that you can actually use that to make decisions quickly. Uh, setting cross-functional analytics teams, very important because you are then actually getting the data from different you know, silos and making more holistic decisions. And cost was an important criteria as you saw. How can I variableize the cost? How can I you know, amortize the cost? How can I make the cost that much more palatable for the senior management? Right. So these are, you know, I would say five things that you know organizations need to do in order to make, you know, make the analytics uh, successful for an um, um, What should one one should be wary about? Yeah, in terms of uh, uh, implementation of, you know, one is uh, it's, it's a it's a costly affair at the end of the day. When it comes to tools, whether it is you know people, uh, whether it is you know whether it's the visualization expert or a statistician that you are hiring, it's expensive, right? Uh, therefore, ROI becomes that much more important for you. Uh, it requires serious commitment in terms of uh, data governance, in terms of management support. Uh, it also needs to know whether you need to invest in analytics tools. Uh, you know, can I do analytics without buying a heavy duty analytics tool, right? Uh, I don't think so. I think you can do fairly, uh, you know, uh, easy analytics without investing in, you know, heavy duty tools. Uh, I have, and there are a lot of open source tools now available which can be used. Uh, I, I think uh, the, the, what happened in the IT boom, people were more, you know, it's like uh, a tool was a toy, right? You need to buy a fancy toy a Ferrari when you actually needed to go to the next lane or next, next, uh, you know, next road. Uh, so we, one should be very, very, you know, conscious about why should I need that tool? Can I do something uh, without that? And then when you are ready to run, right, then you need to buy a Ferrari, not now, right? If somebody is starting a journey. Um, similarly, you know, understanding of data sources and uh, getting them together, that's probably very key for any analytics uh, initiative within an organization. And finally, data security is a key thing uh, because at the end of the day, it has a story about your customer, it has a story about your employee, it has a lot of conf confidential details. So how do you ensure, and that's some, for some reason, in India it is not treated so sacrosanctly, but if you go to the Western world, it is probably one of the key things that come to my mind before they start on analytics, right? I'm exposing my data. Today, data is lying somewhere. Nobody is using it, therefore I'm safe, right? Uh, but the moment you start exposing the data to people, those concerns will come up. So uh, I, I think uh, these, these are some of the things that one should keep in mind. Also, uh, one of the things uh, that I, I, as I said, uh, you don't need to burn the ocean. You need to start small uh, uh, with, the, with the, you know, blessings of the top management with an understanding of what problem you're trying to solve and what kind of metrics you are going to measure. Once you start that process, then it, you know, you start running fairly quickly. If you do the first initiative, which is pretty high, uh, you know, uh, pretty high end in nature, uh, there are more chances of failure. And once you fail, then obviously the next one is going to take that much more time. So uh, yeah, so today you know uh, globally, uh, two out of three companies have hired senior talent in analytics space, right? Uh, usage of analytics has increased almost you know three times uh, in last five years, uh, um, almost. And this is just an anecdotal one. For every dollar spent, uh, people get a ten times return on ROI. Obviously, this has to be contextualized in with respect to a particular organization. Um, having said that, I like the uh, that uh, phrase. Uh, the price of light is less than the cost of darkness. Uh, it's, it's a very, very, you know, sound, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, very, very sound uh, phrase, uh, which uh, says, okay, if you don't invest in analytics, you are living in darkness, and there's a cost of darkness, and you are investing in, in, in trying to get to know what analytics can do for you. You're taking a chance. There's a chance that you will succeed. There is a chance you will not succeed. But if you are not investing in that, you probably will be always remaining in the dark. Uh, at the end, I would say people who, uh, who are not going to adopt analytics over a period of next five to 10 years 
uh, they are going to say, see a significant you know, decrease in their competitiveness with respect to their competitors in the market. So that's pretty much uh, my uh, presentation. Um, so uh, you're exactly right. So you know, uh, today, for example, uh, big data, big ticket analytics initiatives are very far and few, unlike the IT days or those waves that you are talking about, right? Uh, which is in some way a blessing. Okay, so there are big ticket initiatives which are done by typically a Vodafone of the world or a Tesco of the world or a, you know Target of the world because they have seen the small tickets. Okay, but when it comes to you know uh, at the end of the day when it comes to normal regular organizations they are not investing in big ticket. Okay, so fortunately uh, those failures have have not happened where you have you know, right you have ERP implementation failures. Right, this used to be you know big. Uh, news in late 90s and early 2000s, right? Unfortunately, uh, 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 people uh, didn't realize that and kept continuing to do, do that and more in the IT space. But uh, in the IT space, it has not happened. Now, to your second question is, how do you take it to the management? The, the simple answer to that is, uh, take a problem statement, right? Uh, create a cross-functional team to solve that problem statement through data, okay? Don't try to boil the ocean. Build, uh, you know, layer after layer, and then once it is ready, run with it. So uh, some of the examples, and this is again from our, our example, uh, working with a you know very small, uh, you know, distribution company in Hong Kong. They are, you know, they are just like mom 